AIDS and cancer cured by hyperoxygenation. In 1988, this article started a mini revolution in the alternative healthcare community because it's information on hydrogen peroxide and ozone by the author is Waves Forest. Several dozen AIDS patients have not only reversed their death sentences but are now back at work completely free of the disease. They destroyed the virus in their blood by hyperoxygenation, known in various forms as oxygen therapy, biooxidative therapy, or autochemotherapy. It's a simple, inexpensive, and very broad spectrum healing process that many feel could force a complete overhaul of the medical industry. The two basic types of oxygen therapy are ozone blood infusion and absorption of oxygen and water, hydrogen peroxide, at very low concentrations. It turns out that the AIDS virus cannot tolerate high oxygen levels in its victim's blood. Not only that, but every other disease or organism tested so far apparently has the same weakness. Even cancer growths contract and disappear when oxygen saturation is sufficiently increased in the fluid surrounding them since they are anaerobic. AIDS, herpes, hepatitis, Epstein-Barr, cytomegalovirus, and other lipid envelope virus are readily destroyed by hyperoxygenating the patient's blood with ozone. This was demonstrated by, among others, Dr. Horst Kief in Bad Hersfeld, West Germany. Dr. Kief has already cured a number of AIDS victims by drawing blood, infusing it with ozone, and returning it to the patient at regular intervals until all the virus is gone. It can be reached through Biozon Ozon Technic GmbH, Ander Haun No. 10, Bad Hersfeld, D6430, Federal Republic of Germany. Dr. S. Reiling of Stuttgart and Dr. Vernard Wiesbahn of Effelsheim are among the growing number of physicians who have obtained similar results with their patients. They are with Arschlich Gesellschaft für Ozentherapie and J.R.J. Hansler GmbH, respectively. The Basis of Biooxidative Therapies For many years, the health sciences have been seeking to identify the primary physical cause of all diseases, and the cure-all that this basic principle would yield. Now both have been found, but their utter simplicity makes it difficult to accept at first, since it seems like if it's that easy, we should have been using them all along. Our bodies are composed mostly of water, which is 8 ninths oxygen. Most nutritional studies tend to get caught up in the small details of biochemistry and overlook our most abundant and essential element and the fundamental role of its depletion in causing illness. Of all the elements the body needs, only oxygen is in such constant demand that its absence brings death in minutes. The main difference for healing purposes between benign microorganisms, including our own cells, and those which cause disease, is that the latter require much lower oxygen levels. This is due to their more primitive evolutionary origins during the ages when free oxygen was far less abundant. Now their descendants can only survive in low oxygen environments such as accompany stagnation and decay. To become a growth medium for such parasites, one has to have allowed the oxygen saturation of the body's fluid to drop well below the optimum level for healthy cell growth and function. Simple list substances available for restoring one's oxygen balance to a healthy range are ozone, O3, and hydrogen peroxide H2O2, which is much easier to obtain and use. These are both highly toxic when concentrated, which is tended to obscure their gemicidal value except as a skin antiseptic. But when diluted to therapeutic levels, for hydrogen peroxide that's half of 1% or less, they are not only non-toxic but uniquely beneficial. Ozone blood treatment. Ozone overcomes the AIDS virus by a fundamentally different process than usually attempted with drugs. Instead of burdening the liver and immune system with more elaborate toxic substances, ozone simply oxidizes the molecules in the shell of the virus. The treatment is remarkably simple. The ozone is produced by forcing oxygen through a metal tube carrying a 300 volt charge. A pint of blood is drawn from the patient and placed in an infusion bottle. The ozone is then forced into the bottle and mixed in by shaking gently 
whereupon the blood turns bright cardinal red. As the ozone molecule, molecules dissolve into the blood, they give up their third oxygen atom, releasing considerable energy which destroys all lipid envelope virus, and apparently most other disease organisms as well, while leaving blood cells unharmed. It also oxygenates the blood to a greater degree than is usually reached, what with poor air and sluggish breathing habits. The treated blood is then given back to the patient. This treatment is given from twice a week to twice a day, depending on how advanced the disease is. The strengthened blood confers some of the viridicil properties to the rest of the patient's blood as it disperses. The disease will not return as long as the patient maintains his blood in an oxygen-positive state through proper breathing, exercise, and clean diet. A Dr. Proust in Stuttgart has written up to 10 case histories of AIDS patients he has cured by this method, but his and other physician reports of cures are all anecdotal rather than in the form of controlled studies, since they could not be expected to treat some patients and deny treatment to others just for the purpose of accumulating evidence. Thus their results are not considered proof by the U.S. medical community. So the Medizone Company in New York has taken on the task of doing the controlled studies required for the treatment to be approved in the U.S. for general use. Metazone Testing Ozone Blood Treatment Last summer, Metazone obtained from the FBI and IND approval for ozone, which falls under the healing of drugs even though it isn't. They verified that ozone destroys the AIDS virus in vitro and completed their animal tests in the fall of 1986. The test demonstrated no indication of toxicity at 10 times the equivalent amount that is proposed for human treatment. Metazone companies at 123 East 54th Street, Suite 2B, New York, New York, 10022. Phone number is 212-421-0303. Metazone was granted U.S. patent number 4632980 on December 30, 1986, on inactivating lipid envelope viruses in blood that is returned to a mammalian host. In humans, this includes AIDS, herpes, hepatitis, Epstein-Barr virus, and cytomegalovirus, among others. Metazone obtained tentative FDA approval in April 18, 1987 to begin human testing, but for a variety of bureaucratic reasons, the FDA has postponed the actual start of the tests four times now, with requests for further data, some of which has already been given to them. Months have passed along with several thousand AIDS victims since the first announced starting date was postponed. The Metazone staff is hoping to finally begin around November 1st, but are no longer announcing expected starting dates with much confidence. There are no technical problems, but this is the FDA we're dealing with after all. As the company's future hangs on their decision, no one at Metazone wants to risk antagonizing the FDA by speculating about their active, actual motives for stalling on a cure for this unprecedented epidemic. All this has been virtually without any publicity. The official reason for this is that the accepted procedure for publishing medical breakthroughs is to complete all the tests first, even though victims may die waiting for the cautious methodical testing procedure to run its course. No one in the industry wants to raise false hopes, let alone repeat the medical disasters that have resulted in the past from rushing approval on new treatments. On the other hand, the enormously expensive and dubiously effective drug AZT was widely publicized many months before it was approved in the U.S. as its ongoing research into possible AIDS vaccines. In fact, former FDA Commissioner Frank Young has even announced a proposal to make experimental drugs available to AIDS victims as swiftly as possible without waiting for a full FDA approval to be completed. So there appears to be a severe double standard involved here. It seems that highly profitable treatments with serious side effects can be promoted through massive news coverage, while an actual cure, repeatedly demonstrated in Europe with minimal cost and no apparent harmful effects, must be delayed and kept quiet while panic and deaths mount. Surely at this state, the benefits of unauthorized publicity will outweigh the risks. Safe purification of blood for transfusions. Ozone infusion also provides a simple method of purifying stored blood and blood components, eliminating any possibility of disease being transmitted by infusion. Transfusion. It also pre-oxygenates blood to be 
transfused, greatly reducing the burden on the body receiving the blood.